It's this nasty grey area. Do you pull the fuse or do you not? If you can see, the fuse carrier on the left here is cracked around it, whereas the other two are all fine. And um, I don't want to put my fingers too near it or anything. But um, there's access to live parts in there, so that is a dangerous situation. Hey everybody, I'm Dan Jackson and welcome to my channel, Dan's the Engineer. In this video, I'm going to be talking through what you do if you find a dangerous situation relating to the DSO or the DNO uh, supplier's equipment. So I was on site the other day, I found on the free face supply head, one of the supply fuses, the carrier, was uh, cracked around it and there was access to live parts, which is obviously dangerous to anybody in the property, anybody that goes into the room. Now it was in a locked electrical cupboard, but it's still not the point, there's still an electric shock risk. What I'm gonna be talking about is responsibilities with the DSO equipment and the metering equipment and you as an electrician. We've got this fuse, we know it's dangerous, so how do we make it safe? So here's a picture of what I found. So as you can see, that is dangerous. You can get your finger in there, so I have to do something about it. I can't walk away and say, it's not my responsibility, you've got to call UK Power Networks. So let's talk about the equipment and responsibilities. Now, Paul Meenan, um, electrical engineer, he's done a an article on some of the responsibilities of this equipment. So I'm gonna put a link in the descriptions below where you can actually view that. So have a read of that, because it's quite interesting. It's quite relative to what we're talking about. There are eight bits of kit we need to know about. So we've got the supply cable, responsibility of the DSO. We've got the supply head, which is the responsibility of the DSO. We've got the supply fuses, responsibility of the DSO. We've got the meter tails, arguable responsibility of the DSO slash uh, metering company, depends which. We've got the meter board here, which is responsibility of the DSO. Got the meter, responsibility of the metering company. You've got the consumer tails here, which are responsibility of the consumer. However, it's the responsibility of the metering company to connect them into the meter because you are not allowed to touch that equipment. And then you've got the consumer unit, which is the responsibility of the consumer. So you're not supposed to touch any of this. You know, any of this, it's from this point onwards. Now what is always wise is having an isolator, you know, particularly in domestic properties, is having a, a double pole isolator between the consumer tails and the consumer unit. So isolation can be done there opposed to having to get somebody called out to isolate the supply for you when you do upgrades to fuse boards and things like that. Now we know the responsibilities. The person responsible for this situation, this dangerous situation is UK Power Networks, the DSO. So what I've done Whilst on site, there and then, I called up UK Power Networks to report a dangerous situation. If you don't have their number, all you can do is Google. It's pretty straightforward. Google the number and it'll pop up. I've got it saved in my phone anyway. And you just follow the instructions. Now, you have to make sure you are very clear. So you need to know the address um, of the property. You need to know access arrangements because as an electrician, you might not be providing access. It might be the client. Hello. This is UK Power Network's Fault Funds Emergency Information Centre. To tell us about damage to power cables, a substation, or let us know about a dangerous situation involving electricity, please press 1. To tell us about damage to power cables, press 1. Or let us know about a dangerous situation involving electricity, press 2. If you are calling... Good morning, this is Roxanne at UK Power Network. How can I help you? Hi there, I'm an electrician working for a client in their property. Um, it's a commercial property, and um, okay. the supply fuse carrier is damaged. Okay, um, when you say damaged, what's, um, what's the issue there? Just so I can write up on the job notes here. The case around the fuse is smashed, so there's access to live parts. So it's all up and running, it's all working but there's a, a, an electric shock risk and someone can touch the live parts. Are the live parts exposed there? Yes. Can I take the um, postcode of the property there to start off with? And who would we need to contact directly in regards to access there? Uh, you can contact me because I'm here all day. You're here all day, okay. Can I take your name there as well? My name is Dan Jackson. 
Um, the number you're calling on, is this the best number to contact you back on today? Yes. Okay, did you want to grab a pen there? I can certainly give you a reference number there. So if you have any other further questions, if you'd like to add anything, you can always give us a call and just give that reference there. Yeah, one second. Right, yep, yeah, I'm ready. Okay, no worries. All right, okay. Thank you for the call there. Thank you very much. Bye then. Thank you. Bye. But make sure you write that reference number down just in case you need to call them back up again. If you have any issues with getting the relevant person out, i.e. UK Power Networks or whatever the DSO is, what you can do is remind them of their duty of care to comply with the Electrical Safety, Quality and Continuity Regulations 2002. So I'm actually going to stay on site and I'm going to wait for UK Power Networks. Now, in this particular situation, the door is locked. I have the key. Nobody else has the key, but we, I've made sure that the manager of the building is aware of this. So in some instances, you may need to turn a consumer unit off. It would impact the business operationally if we turn a supply off, and that can quite often be the case. But if it needs to be turned off, it needs to be turned off. Now, what some electricians believe they can do is just pull that fuse out. You can be prosecuted for tampering with equipment that isn't yours. It's not your responsibility. It's their responsibility. It's a really nasty gray area because you don't want to leave a situation unsafe. Now, in this instance, I'm staying here on site and I'm waiting for UK Power Network. I'm doing everything I can not to breach any regulations in the electricity at work regulations 1989. So I'm making sure that I'm doing all I can to make sure that this situation doesn't get any worse, that people don't go in there and, and exposed to live parts. Taking fuses out and, and touching their equipment is a little bit more involved than what it, what it may seem. And there, there are risks involved. It's not as straightforward. You need to be careful that you're not breaching any regulations yourself. And it's the same as if you change any consumer units or do any works that involve isolating the supply to the consumer unit, you shouldn't be taking the fuse out yourself. You should be calling the metering company and they can do it for you. And again, that's a whole gray area in terms of temporary disconnection. And I, I'm gonna be doing a video soon on that as well. So I'm gonna wait for UK Power Networks to turn up. As you can see, UK Power Networks have been in and he's replaced the fuse carrier round here, although it doesn't look new, it looks second hand or whatever. And then um, they've uh, sealed, sealed the uh, supply head all back up there. All done, all safe. So I know this is a real quick video. I hope it is helpful. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.